Oh, that's a bigger fish. That's a bigger fish. Oh. What is that? Oh, let's drop down and see if it'll bite. Drop down. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's big, whatever it is. What's going on? If you are looking for some early ice walleye tips and tricks, along with some awesome live scope and underwater footage, then stick around because this video is for you. Welcome back. If we haven't met yet, my name's TJ Erickson. In the middle of getting everything set up, I had a walleye come up and bite, had a perch come up and bite. Um, finally had to take my rod out so I could finally get stuff set up. But here we are, we're on the ice. It is first ice, early ice. I had a really tough time putting the boat away, but let me tell you what, it feels good to be out on the ice. Today we're gonna be targeting some walleyes, uh, maybe some pike and some perch as well, um, but mostly focusing on walleyes. We're gonna be running a lot of different cameras today um, between the tip up, the live scope, the aqua view, the main camera, the head camera, so hoping to give you a lot of different angles, um, give you a great experience while also giving you some quality information. So enough talking, let's get fishing. Oop. Leg up. Leg up, leg up, leg up. I'm gonna walk, because I don't want to spook it. There we go. Not very big. Ooh, big bluegill. Geez, not what I was expect. Big bluegill. Hate a big ol' shiner. We're gonna release it right away though. So for reference, that bluegill ate a minnow. It's probably pretty bright. Hate that big of a shiner. That's what I've been doing, just tail hooking my shiner on a red octopus hook with a little split shot. Just a couple feet up. So I'm gonna swim around freely down there. I'll get this back down. And we'll be back in a second. <coughs> oh geez, I have a flag up and I didn't even hear it. I have some bells on this thing. There, he's still on it. Still on it, he's kind of running with it. Give him a little bit of line. And just reel down straight into him. What do I have? Walleye. Hey, right, whoa, 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 come back here, come back here. <laughs> Another nice fish, and we'll get him back in right away. So let's talk location. Early ice, I'm looking for a couple things. One of the first things that I'm looking for is some shallow flats, anywhere from five to 10 feet, where it's a nice flat or even a tapering flat that moves out to deeper water. Um, but a lot of what I'm looking for is some good weeds. There's still some decent weed growth early in the winter, and there tends to be a lot of fish around those. You know, a lot of times you'll have some of the bait fish and that'll attract some of the predator fish, like your pike, your walleyes, your bass, some of those. I also like to try that first break line adjacent to some of those weedy flats. You know, especially midday, sometimes those fish will slide off that edge a little more get a little bit closer to that deeper water and then move back up as the evening progresses right now I have my set line up in a little bit shallower maybe around six feet of water I haven't um, stuck the live scope down there but I could see what I did was I walked around and I could actually see the weeds through the ice right now so it was really slick I didn't have to drop the camera down I could just walk around see where some of these patches of weeds are and I actually found a little spot a little opening within those weeds where I was able to drill my hole and set my set line and I actually slid out a little bit deeper into about 12 feet off the edge of this break so I have that large flat oh, there's a fish Let's see if he's gonna come in coming in Oh, we'll get back to locations here in a second. There we go. Finally came up. Whoa, another small fish. Right color, wrong size. Another small fish, maybe around 10 inches. But either way, fun to watch eat, fun to watch on the live scope. We're going to get that guy back right away. One's coming in off to the side. Oh, we missed. It's a little bit bigger, not big. There we go. 
uh, you can see them a little bit better. And there we go, about a 15, 14 incher. Nice eater, again, we'll get that guy right back down. Come a little bit to reorient, and there he goes. So they've definitely been liking the tungsten jig with the minnow the best. So let's get back to location. I can't remember where I ended off, um, but basically all I have a setup right now is I have my set line up in a little bit shallower, about six feet on top of that flat, found that good weed patch, found a little open spot in it and set my set line right there. Where I'm sitting right now is you have that flat that's right out here and then it kind of tapers off into some of that deeper water. I'm not all the way at the base of it. I'm kind of at that midline. Um, it gets to be about 18, 19 feet out here. I'm sitting in about 12 kind of right along that edge. It seems like they like to kind of travel these edges in between that deep water and that shallow water. They have access to that deep water. They have access to that shallow water with the weeds and the bait. Let's talk quick about presentations. Um, the presentation that I started with was actually this rattle bait. I really like to start with that because in an area like this where it's nothing specific, it's not a pile of rocks, nothing that's holding fish specifically, they can kind of cruise around this whole area. I'd like to get something down there that's making some noise, that's kind of attracting some fish in the area, but then they might not be able to trigger that bite. Then a lot of times what I do, once I have those fish into the area with that rattle bait, then I will switch to something um, like a spoon. This specifically is a clam leech flutter spoon, and I have it tipped with a just a head of a fathead minnow. And I like that, it has a little bit slower presentation. That fall and that flutter up can sometimes trigger some of those bites, gets a little bit more finesse than some of that rip and bait. And then what I started doing is I noticed that my set line, I kind of showed you that one a little earlier. That one is just a plain hook with a split shot above it. Just letting that shiner swim freely down there. I noticed that that one was getting bit a little bit more. So I actually threw down small tungsten jig and I just put a whole minnow. I've been using both fat heads and shiners on it and just kind of let it swim around freely again. Have that weight to get it down there. Let it sit horizontal. I hook it right underneath the chin up through the head. So those are some of the presentations that I've been using so far today. Um, today we've had a little bit of success on all of them. Sometimes if I sense that lull, if I'm not really seeing that there's fish in the area, I'll drop that rattle bait back down, rip it around a little bit, try to just create a little bit of noise down there, seeing if anything else can pull in. That's a big fish, what is that? Be a walleye. Oh, that's a big, what is that? No, I think that's a bike. Oh, spooked it. See if it'll circle back around. Man, oh, there it's coming back. You can see it on the live scope. Oh, the sun. I think we'll be lucky if we get in. Woo! Came back, kind of spooked it, and then it came back. Oh, you can almost see it underneath the ice there. Oh, you see it on the live scope right there. <laughs> came back. Uh oh, oh my goodness. We have him. Ooh, if I get this fish in, it's gonna be very lucky. Bumped him and he still comes back. Those pike are so feisty. We'll see if we can see him. There he is. He was all sorts of twisted up. Let's see if we can get his head out. Nope, he wants to keep going. Yeah, they can get so tricky. <laughs> there he is. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Perfect right in the lip. About the only way you can land a pike like this when you're using a small tungsten jig. Not a bad pike, it's certainly a fun fight. All right, we'll get that one right back down there. That's a flag. Grab my pliers, my bump board, make sure the head camera's on. Just be able to hit him right away. He's running. Nothing big. You can see him right over here. Oh, a decent walleye. See him right underneath the ice. Show him off quick. There he is. A little bit better. Probably in that 16 inch range. And we will let him go right away. Awesome. Oh, something right on me. Shoot. And you see him spooking. Shoot. Oh, walleye. 
just coming in from that. Close this. Again, not a giant, but these have all been pretty decent eaters. Ooh, we're gonna let that guy, let him, whew, and he's off. And the reason I'm not keeping fish is a lot of times this early ice period, we don't have our big bodies of water frozen. You know, Red Lake just started getting iced over. So there's some people fishing out there right now. These small lakes simply don't have great populations of walleyes, you know. So when you're sneaking out on some of this early ice stuff, whether it be for panfish or for walleyes, um, just keep that in mind as much as possible uh, just to catch and release. And that way there's going to be a sustainable fish population in those lakes for a long time to come. So that's my two cents on catch and release. Obviously you can do whatever you want within your legal limit, but those are my suggestions in order to keep these fish populations sustained. Ooh, there's a bigger something. Oh, I bumped my camera. Yeah, sure enough. He just smoked the camera. Is he gonna finally bite this? <laughs> Three times. A little bit bigger presentation. Ooh, he liked it. <laughs> oh my gosh, he wants that. Bad. I don't know, was it three or four? This guy doesn't leave me alone. I'm gonna have to place my camera. This guy has been at least fun to watch. On that side a little more, see if we can call him back in. Sure enough. See how he just turned hard? I think that guy's gone, but man, was that cool. I'll probably go attack my tip up here. Put the flag. Got my stuff. Oh, I almost bipped it. Oh, shoot, it's not running. It froze up a little bit. There, now it's going. Now she's going. Should just be able to. What in the world? Uh, I bet that's that pike. You can see him right through. Oh, he has all sorts of twisted up. There we go. Another smaller pike. I wonder if that was the same one we saw on the camera. There it goes. One of the things that's good to do um, after you catch any fish, but especially after you, after you catch a pike and it's spun up a little bit, just run your finger down that line. So especially when you have smaller pound tests like that, you'll want to check that. It should be coming right underneath the camera anytime. Oh, that was a sweet strike. Whoa, 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 wow, what a zoo. That could have been very bad. Again, another nice walleye. Nothing very big today, but again, all these eater size fish and we will send her back down. Sweet. There's one. Oh, again on the rattle bait. Small little guy. Jeez, these things are just, this is dangerous. Not big, but holy cow did that thing. Whoa, I'll get him back down. Yep, there we go, there we go. Getting pretty tough to see on that underwater camera, so it might be time to take that one out. I love this AquaView. It's the Micro Revolution Pro 5.0. With the reel on the back, it is just so convenient. Um, has the recording features, it can fit in a pocket. So yeah, just a sweet camera. If you want something portable, something that can record, um, the reel on it, like I said, is just awesome. Switch over back to this guy. That one's a walleye. That little bit longer one, not a big one. A little par for the course here. Nothing huge, but man, does it feel good to be catching some walleyes on ice. Ugh. Now let's see if we can get something a little bit bigger. Ooh, that's bigger. What are you? That's gotta be a pike. Oh, if that's a walleye, that's big. Oh, if that's a walleye, that's big. Oh, it's big, whatever it is. 
whatever it is, it's big. Oh, be a walleye. Oh, he's making me nervous. Be a walleye. Oh, I don't know if I'm recording. Oh, I'm not recording, I wasn't recording. Be a walleye. Oh, that's gotta be pike. The way it's taking those rotins. Oh, big old pike. Sweet. On the drop. Jay's gonna try to get this thing's head up the hole. See if I can back it up. Oh, this thing's gonna jump out of the hole. Ah, oh, he makes me nervous. up there sweet oh yes I'm gonna pop that out while it's still in the water here take him out for a quick look get everything out of the way oh yes that is a sweet sweet fish right there try to get it some good light oh man this thing is 30 six oh one more time god that was just a sweet eat on the camera too 36 inches wow that's awesome oh and we will get that guy back down well i think we're going to end on that note if you found value in this video whether it's for educational purpose or pure entertainment of some fish catching i would love it if you would subscribe to show your support so i can keep putting out more content this summer guiding got so busy it got tough to put out videos this winter i plan on putting out a lot more content whether it be fishing videos like this or some tips and trick videos talking about electronics things like that so i hope you'll follow along and stay tuned